we have honorable shri hardeep singh puri ji honorable union minister of housing and urban affairs petroleum and natural gas government of india and the moderator of this session will be ms shivani gupta senior associate editor cnn news 18 mananiya kendriya mantri shriman hardeep singh puri ji ko aap sab ki taaliyon ke sath manch par aamantrit kar rahi hu apne vibhag ko लंबे समय तक संभालने का उन्होंने एक रिकॉर्ड बनाया है और जिस गंभीरता के साथ जिस कुशलता के साथ वे निर्णय लेते हैं और उन निर्णयों का अनुपालन सुनिश्चित करते हैं वो सभी के लिए अनुकरणीय है मैं निवेदन करती हूं श्री विजय दर्डा जी से चेयरमैन लोकमत समूह की इस मंच पर माननीय केंद्रीय मंत्री श्रीमान हरदीप सिंह पुरी जी का पुष्पगुच्छ देकर स्वागत करें और साथ ही प्रखर पत्रकार शिवानी गुप्ता जी का भी स्वागत करें ऑनरेबल श्री हरदीप सिंह पुरी जी इज वेल नोन फॉर हिज थॉटफुलनेस काम एंड कंपोजर एंड शिवानी गुप्ता जी इज एन एक्सपर्ट ऑफ मेनी फील्ड्स सो इट विल बी इंटरेस्टिंग टू witness this session and be a part of it shivani ji over to you thank you so much and thank you to honorable minister petroleum and natural gas and housing and urban affairs for being with us it's my pleasure to be speaking to you uh, the overarching theme that we are discussing today is indian democracy and how mature have we become as an indian democracy as we celebrate 75 years of our independence and we celebrate amrit kal we look at the next 25 years as india's decades and the next century as india's century a lot of people mr puri would be wondering that if the temple of democracy which is parliament doesn't function this is what has been discussed in news this is what citizens talk about if the temple of democracy which is parliament doesn't function most often as we've seen for example in the current budget session resuming then is indian democracy functioning thank you very much uh, shivani ji um, let me start by thanking you for describing me or somebody was describing me as a calm and composed uh, individual i have been described variously in the past but very very seldom only as being a very calm person would i judge indian democracy by what is happening in parliament today hmm. that's a question and i don't think that question can be answered in its entirety without one or two explanatory notes hmm. indian democracy is perhaps not perhaps it is the world's largest democracy it is also the world's oldest democracy mm. we had democratic institutions here thousands of years earlier we are only a very young independent country and moving ahead to 2047 when we will be celebrating 100 years as an independent country that is only a small percentage of our overall existence mm -hmm. we are trying to do several things simultaneously we are a robust democracy we are a somewhat loud democracy but democracy produces strong institutions which i believe we have and parliament is one of them the others being the free press i mean just imagine you are having a conclave and i see a series of important political people like my friend sitting here the previous um, minister we all show up because we take the press seriously mm. but there are some people who by virtue of the democratic ethos and what results the elections throw up end up not having even 10% threshold of seats in the lower house to be called a to be formally designated as a leader of opposition in both houses they don't have the lok sabha and the rajya sabha put together they don't reach a figure of 100 they 
say that their voice is not heard. I was present in the house when the Honorable President addressed both houses of Parliament. This particular gentleman who goes to a foreign country says that he is not heard. He spoke for 42 minutes. Now maybe he's got selective amnesia that he remem doesn't remember his 42 minute speech. Here is a gentleman who goes abroad and decries the absence of democracy. I don't know whether he was born in 1975 or not. That is the only instance I know of where in the history of India, democracy was killed brutally. Civil liberties were suspended, freedom of speech was removed, opposition leaders were locked up. That's the only instance. Who was in power in 1975? Put that aside. A previous government to which this young leader who goes and makes an issue of democracy outside our shores. You're not naming him. No, I'll name him in a minute. I have no hesitation in naming him. But I think you don't even need, need to leave it to anybody's imagination. I see all my young friends smiling. There was a government earlier which used a particular section in our constitution, 356, on 100 occasions to do what? To dismiss legitimate state governments. This gentleman's grandmother used 356 50 times. We have been in power or we have been in office. Modi ji, since 2014 May, do any of you remember us ever having used 356? I am asking you a factual question. Do any of you think we should use 356? Sometimes the individual concerned, proud Punjabi and Sikh like me says, Oh my God, we should. Because some, sometimes I see things spiraling out of control. No, because ours is a system of cooperative federalism. We are constitutionalists. Because the Prime Minister believes in democracy, he is the only Prime Minister of India who prior to assuming his position as Prime Minister served for many years as a successful Chief Minister of a state and saw its transformation from devastation on account of an act of nature to bringing it back and making it a successful state. Now, what is democracy? Who is disrupting democracy? I can, I can have a debate with you on that. But let me come back. My answer is India is the largest democracy, oldest democracy, and I'm adding it's the strongest democracy. We have a few comical figures. I'm choosing my words carefully. Who want to go outside India and seek the intervention of the outside world to have a regime change in India? Why? Because he thinks, and he has an uncle there somewhere, who's saying, nah, nah, look at what he's saying. He's actually not uh, wrong. Are bhai, if I ever make a statement, no uncle or aunt of mine comes to my rescue. I am viciously trolled on social media and because I am in politics now, I wear it as a badge of honor. So I think people who go outside India and criticize and seek the intervention, I am using it within quotes, of an outside government ought to be ashamed of themselves. I think this is the longest I've had uh, an interview talk about uh, someone without naming them. So at least I'll frame it in my question this time. You're talking, of course, about Rahul Gandhi. He's been under fire from the BJP and the government in parliament for exactly I what I think he said. is going to be under fire from his own party. Let me make a prediction. <laughs> when you... How many Punjabi are you? Our Punjabi is a lot of fun. Did you understand that? Maybe a little bit, but please. Well, explain. I'll translate it for you. You know, there's a little light-hearted state uh, saying in Punjabi that the spoken word says, you utter me, you, you, you speak me, and I will make sure you will have to leave the city. Some of the statements he has made are atrocious. And I think the problem is not coming from the BJP. It's coming from his own people. Some who are not saying it in public. They're telling you, say, Yaar, ye kahan phas gaye? O jo bhi Bharat jodne ki yatra mein koshish ki thi, O sari yaha pe yaar nuksan ho gaya. Pata nahi kya joda tha, kya nahi joda tha. But you have a problem on your hands. I am, I must say, 
uh, you have to count your assets and liabilities. As far as I am concerned, I am quite happy with how he is acting. Because he is BJP's asset. He is BJP's asset. I didn't say it. You said it. I am inferring from what you said. You said it. I didn't say it. I mean, I mean, at the at the very least, the man has uh, what is it called, manoranjan value. Okay, but let me seriously ask you: the opposition today, led by Congress Party and by Rahul Gandhi, they say that you have uh, usurped the power of all institutions, including what's happening in Parliament. It's not functioning. Their voices are curbed down. Of course, uh, Rajya Sabha chair has responded to that uh, that nobody's mics were switched off. But the larger question is. The opposition believes that there is no democracy as it used to be since BJP came to power. Why is that? I have told you before that in the past, there was one situation in June 1975 when democracy was closed and closed and closed and closed. That was June 1975. Today, democracy means press. Look at what the press is saying. My God! And because we have weak defamation laws, they get away with it. Look what social media is saying. There's no control on what social media says. You can cook up anything against anyone. And as I said, we haven't dismissed any state government. The Supreme Court is as vibrant as... Um, I, do, I have to be careful when I use words on the Supreme Court. Um, they're trying to run by metro system. They're trying to... Uh, you know, legislate on other areas. Look, we are in a fascinating situation because Indian democracy today is the world's largest and the world's strongest. Each institution under our democracy, the press, the judiciary, everybody is trying to come into his own. And they will exert themselves, but the, at the end of the day, the mass is wiser and more constant than the prince. The people will determine. I said in 2019, when they said, people said, we did an exercise, how many people are beneficiaries of the different schemes that the Modi government had introduced. And I think the figure was 22 crores. Kitne hamare 2019 ke chunav mein, ko votes mile 22 crores. And I'm telling you now, this is an election, this is a democratic process where the Prime Minister, Honourable Prime Minister has succeeded in doing one very major thing. He has proved good governance is also good politics. And if these guys continue the way they are, the next election in 2024 will even leave the others. I had predicted 303 to the, in the 2019 election. I'm on record. And I'm telling you, if they continue like this, then apart from the entertainment value, our figure will be even higher than in the 2019 election. So how much will it be? We are one year ahead of, abhi, abhi one year ek, away from the ek, election. Ek or do rehte hain. Uh. Ka, if it goes on like this, look, this is an era of numbers. You can quantify the progress. I happen to be the housing and urban affairs minister. And I tell you the Congress government between 2004 and 14, in a 10 year period, they are spent on the urban space, cumulative of all the Kendriya Yojana sab mila ke, 1 lakh, 1 lakh 57,000 crores tha. In the 8 years, because uh, Modi ji assumed uh, responsibility in May 2014, the scheme started in June 2015. In the 8 years, the figure now as against that 1 lakh 57,000 crores is 18 lakh crores. So, no matter which way you look at it, hmm. let me give you, you know, the talk about petrol prices. Hmm. On two occasions, 2021 November mein or 2022 May mein, Maneniya Pradhan Mantri ji ne ye nirnay liya ki wo central excise jo hoti hai, petrol or diesel pe, usko kam kar denge. Aur us nirnay ke karan, 21 November 2021 or May 2022 ke petrol or diesel ka dam 13 rupay or 16 rupay respectively kam hua. Aaj stithi ye hai madam ki BJP rule state or non BJP rule state mein 15 rupay per liter ka antar hai in the, in the petrol prices. 15 rupees in two neighboring states. 
और ये इन्फ्लेशन की बात करते हैं यू नो रेवड़ी पॉलिटिक्स और लूट मचाई हुई है एंड इफ यू लुक एट दी एक्चुअल फैक्ट यूल डिस्कवर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन गुड गवर्नेंस एंड दिस थिंग क्यों बिकॉज दे वर नॉट विलिंग टू रिड्यूस दी वैट इन दर विच इज अंटेज चार्ज इन द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सो दर इज अ डिफरेंस इन प्राइसिंग between 15 rupees and 12 rupees between bjp states and non bjp states speaking of petroleum uh, you are the minister for petroleum and natural gas and one of the markers of how india has grown in the world and how india's weight has grown in the world is that the government has handled the pressure that has come its way uh, on buying russian oil for example post the russia ukraine conflict and you as a minister have faced some of that resistance and some of those questions that pressure from especially the western countries do you want to share a little bit of how much pressure you faced and the how you dealt with it uh, shivani ji pehli baat to ye hai i don't think the modi government faces pressure within inverted commas i have never heard of the prime minister being under any pressure and i have never felt any pressure first of all let me lay the facts before you india as a sovereign country has always exercise the right to source its energy from wherever it can at the most affordable prices in the last few years we have diversified the sources of energy from 27 countries to 39 countries till may till 31st march 2022 we bought only very little energy from russia very little yes what 0.2% why because obviously much cheaper to source it from your doorstep from uh, countries in the gulf which are next door or countries which are geographically more proximate but we also bought till a few years ago hardly any energy from the united states today we are buying 20 billion dollars of energy from the united states and yes our imports from russia have increased they have increased simply because the russian crude which we are sourcing is more economical and there is no way that we i mean i have always said uh, i was asked by one of your uh, professional colleagues and anchor in the west uh, do you have any moral this thing i said the only moral, moral uh, compunction we have is the duty to the uh, indian taxpayer and to the indian consumer today if russian crude is available which it became in between it was more expensive we started buying more from iraq we are playing the market card and only a government like modi ji's government has the confidence thanks to the prime minister of reducing excise our omcs uh, cushion some of the um, uh, 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 pass through i mean gas prices recently went up by 120 rupees or so the pa pass on to the consumer was uh, one third of that so we are exercising all our options as a large consumer and we will continue to do that in the foreseeable future and by the way the west is not unhappy that we are buying russian oil because mm. if we were not buying russian oil we'd be buying more uh, gulf oil and then the price would go up further mm. so it was more posturing you're saying posturing or uh, uneducated comments from the press okay may uh, i leave that for the western press to answer but i want to come back to the question of indian democracy it is not just indian opposition today mr puri but also for example global think tanks ranking houses indices houses who are consistently rating indian democracy poorly and this is not a 2014 no, first, first, trend first, first, this has been happening since pre 2014 first of all first of all let me give you a simple explanation hmm. i'm a little older than you and i've been around a little longer the entire ecosystem was built up on the patronage of the erstwhile dispensation what's happened is funding for some of these institutions came from country x y z i'm not going into individual cases they appointed their fellow travelers and like minded people to head these think tanks what happened the congress party lost power it's their losing power is not the serious thing the real serious thing is the expectation that they are not likely to reclaim power that is the more serious thing so now all these um, uh, parts of that ecosystem are running helter and skelter now what happens as a process as a what is the result so you don't see you don't you are not able to take it on democratically within the confines of the indian democratic space so you try and you know get a needling done from outside from some guy who likes to uh, 
you know manipulate the markets to do some shorting mm. you you get you use some uh, discredited uh, uh, media house somewhere to make a comment look the indian people are much wiser and more mature and what you are witnessing here is that you must have a conclave like this to have a discussion on indian democracy and i commend you for that no but today we are being ranked as an electoral autocracy we wonder what it is my question though by mr whom? by whom by these think think no, uh, think which time. one which one let's let's talk about these think so tanks. this is of course we them uh, come on come on let's let's get serious freedom house uh, <laughs> you know a few days ago we were being told that there has been perhaps some regulatory oversight missing because xyz two days ago i got a statement from the treasury secretary telling us about one bank which uh, went under there now where are the banks going under in america no so i i'm just talking about one case hmm. all i'm telling you is that we must have perspective and you know as a student of social science i was taught one very basic thing that when you take somebody's assessment and this is the problem with social media you see if a newspaper publishes something you ask bhai kaun hai newspaper iske piche financing kahan se aati hai forgive me but that's it iska editor kaun hai uski intellectual orientation kaun hai wohi khabar kisi indian अखबार में वर्नैक्यूलर लैंग्वेज में हिंदी में अंग्रेजी में छपी हुई उसका एक वैल्यू वही चीज आप सोशल मीडिया में कह दो उसके दो फॉलोअर हो गए उसको भी आप कंसिडर करते हैं कौन से थिंक टैक कहाँ है लेट मी अश्योर यू इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी इज इन वेरी गुड हैंड्स इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी इज स्ट्रॉन्ग इट इज रोबस्ट एंड इट इज दी एन वी ऑफ अ फ्यू पीपल सो यू विल कंटिन्यू दिस but my question to you as a former diplomat is that isn't it time that india also publishes some of these ratings because you know unless you begin to present your story or have your own view and perspective you are going to be bound to I'm fall not, back I, on the I, western I, I view i am not i am not so sure on that that i want to respond i see my uh, colleague minakshi ji sitting there she also had deals with external it's affairs so i think right. you should ask the question to that i want to meanwhile thank you very much <laughs> all right i want to ask you just a final question on uh, you know where we are heading as a democracy do you believe Indian democracy is finally closing on being mature, or is is there still time that we will need before all of us can see it blossoming? Look, first of all, let's be very clear: all terms are relative. Hmm. Mature, I think we are perhaps one of the most mature democracies. I mean, the word term democracy is used very loosely. How? Why are we one of the most mature uh, democracies? We have elections periodically. Those elections throw up clear verdicts. I mean, at the time of the previous dispensation, we never got a any party getting an absolute majority or a clear majority. Here we are getting clear majorities. We have never suspended civil liberties like they did in the emergency. We have never uh, uh, passed other crazy laws. A young leader uh, takes an ordinance cleared by his cabinet and shreds it into pieces in a in a press uh, in an assembly. In 2009, in Manmohan Singh ji's time, they tried to pass a uh, you know um, a law. which would have severely curtailed uh, freedoms and a, and the court struck it down so we have never tried to trample on any basic freedoms we have a point of view we reach out to the people through the mantra of development and as i said the honorable prime minister has shown that good governance is also good politics as we proceed towards 2024 and further i think we are going to go from being a, the fifth largest economy in the world by the way when we were ninth largest economy in 2014 and we came to fifth position we enjoyed ourselves the most because we had a little bit of fun because we replaced the united kingdom yeah. coming to fifth place now in a few months time we will be or a few months time or little later we'll be the fourth largest economy replacing germany but if you look at all the other international assessment we are slated to be at least the third largest economy which is going to be by the year 2040 this is not my prediction but i think an earnest young pr prediction something close to 24 trillion dollars which is what the state of the us economy that is the point at which your per capita income will go and this ability of people to mislead on the basis of freebies will be severely diminished thank, thank, you. You, so thank you so much thank you so much honorable shri hardeep singh puri ji and thank you so much shivani ma'am uh, 
Uh, I now invite Shri Vijay Bhaviskar Ji, Group Editor, to please present a memento to Honorable Minister as a mark of respect and honor. Is manch par aapke in ojasvi vicharon ke liye aapka bahut bahut dhanyavad aur saathi dhanyavad Shivani Ji ka bhi unke pehne sawalon ke liye.